My name is Tim Toman. I'm a forest entomologist with the West Virginia Department of Agriculture. It's a little hard to tell us because those are old, those trees there are probably, you know, 300 year old trees. And those are really nice looking trees. <laughs> so, and they, yeah. The hemlock is what's known as a keystone species in the forest. So it comes in and it actually alters the environment to something that wouldn't otherwise be there. In a place like Cathedral in particular, where it's a, um, almost a solid hemlock stand, or it was, you know, it produces its own uh, little microclimate. Yeah, they're normally it's very dark. And they kind of make their own kind of micro habitat as they take over an area. The Adelgid here is native uh, to uh, Jap the mountains of Japan. Um, and what happened was somebody probably bought a hemlock tree in the 1950s and they think they brought it into the Richmond area and that the insects spread out from there um, to the point now where they um, are go up and down the Appalachian Mountains from Georgia north to Maine. And so the trees over there are resistant to the insect, whereas the eastern hemlock here and the Carolina hemlock, which, um, you know, they're in the eastern United States and have very little or no um, evolutionary history with this insect. And each one of these little white dots at the base of the needle, is the, that's the adelgid there. Usually there's one insect in each one of those white things, but sometimes when the trees get really covered with the insects, you can, you'll see three or four on the base of each needle, and that's when the infestation is really bad. These ones um, are pretty small, but when they're healthier, they kind of look like the, um, like the end of a Q-tip and sitting right there at the base of the needle. It's hard to point to a particular one and say that one died because of a delgid, but you know, there's a pretty good chance that it would have because they, <clears throat> once they get stressed and they start to go, they go pretty quick. Usually in within a year or two, the, the tree will um, fall. They, they fall quite quickly. Um, so um, they can be quite dangerous within a short time of their death. Well, the treatments in Cathedral started, I believe, in 2004. I mean, but the, initially we didn't know um, no one had any idea really what was happening. Were these going to kill the trees? Because, you know, uh, it was kind of the first time it had spread and gotten really bad. We don't usually treat every single tree in the park, but we are trying to do that in Cathedral. I mean, there's a lot of trees here. Even though it's a relatively small state park, there's, we're guessing, somewhere around 5,000 trees. All the treatments we do the, the, um, is based, the first thing you do is measure the diameter of the trees. So, you know, right through the center. Based on that, he's going to drill divided by three. So he's going to drill four holes in the tree and then uh, right on the um, on those the root flares of the tree. And we're going to use this method of injecting the chemical into the tree uh, because there's actually running water right near the base of the tree. So then in those holes these little uh, he puts in these little plastic plugs and that will those uh, plugs will eventually allow us to put the needles in, in the in the steps later on. The plug goes in just below the cambium, which is kind of where the growth takes the layer kind of between the, in the trunk where the growth is taking place. Now based on the diameter, we use that to figure out how much chemical to inject it with. And it's 104 milliliters for this tree. The pesticide that we use is a, it's a type of imidacloprid that's formulated for being injected into the trees. Um, kind of something that's interesting is that we, even though this system is pressurized, this it will not work. The tree, uh, unless the tree is actually moving the fluid up from the roots up to the tops of the tree. So you can only do this at certain times of the years when hemlock is active. Before I was on this job, I thought of it as just an object like anything else sitting there, but it is actually the tree is alive and it's doing different things during the day. Uh, so. In this weather, it's probably translocating fluid all day, but at certain times of the year, it will only be active first thing in the morning or, uh, you know, in, in the night. So, um, 
it's kind of neat that, you know, to working with this system that you really can tell that these trees are alive. One of the things they've tried to do is actually kind of cross the hemlock trees um, with Chinese hemlock, trying to get resistance in a manner similar to what's being done with chestnut. They find that the eastern hemlock here is unable to interbreed with the, uh, with the Chinese hemlock.